Amen. Greetings, family of God, and welcome to another um, midweek service. And we are so glad that you can join us this evening. And uh, I want to encourage you wherever you are, tell a friend to uh, log on and to uh, share the link. Amen. We uh, we are we want we want to get God's word out tonight. Amen. And uh, I believe it's so significant for us in these times that uh, that we need to share God's word. Amen. I believe that people don't have uh, facilities anymore to get to churches, and churches are not doors are not open as uh, much as we want them to be open. But uh, we know that through social media and through these various platforms that we can get into people's houses to share God's word. Amen. And uh, I count it such a privilege and. Uh, such an honor to come to you and to share God's word and uh, it's uh, something that's uh, really great and uh, in my heart I want to uh, just acknowledge those that have uh, come uh, pre in the previous week my, my sister shared last week and my brother shared the week before and uh, when I left you I left you at a specific spot uh, when, uh, when I shared uh, two weeks or three weeks ago uh, hunger for the Holy Spirit hunger for the Holy Spirit and uh, I want to I want to I want to use this to uh, to springboard my uh, my exhortation this evening and uh, I won't be too long I would just be a few minutes and uh, if you'll allow me just to speak into your hearts and for you to accept this word and uh, you know we're just coming out of uh, ascension and uh, and last week we had such a great uh, uh, meeting on Thursday and uh, we thank God for all the information that he has imparted through our midweek connect and tonight I want to use this uh, opportunity just to uh, continue from where I left you and I want to recap very quickly and uh, you give me a couple of minutes to recap and uh, I spoke to you about how we have uh, suppressed our hunger for the Holy Spirit. How we have suppressed our longing and how we have uh, blotted out uh, uh, our, our desire for the Holy Spirit. That we have used the uh, things of the world to suppress and, uh, and we don't have a desire anymore for the things of the Spirit. And, uh, and Jesus uh, commands uh, his disciples, uh, we see in the book of John, uh, that uh, they should go to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, that they should go and wait there for the Holy Spirit for, for what the Father had promised. And uh, I, want, I want to use this and I, and I left you at, uh, at, uh, in, in Genesis and uh, when, uh, when Hagar, when she was put out. And uh, when uh, Isaac, when 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 uh, Abraham put put her out, and uh, I believe that uh, there was a cry in Ishmael's heart for him to he was he was thirsty. And the Bible says this that, that God came down to Agar and said, uh, "Don't worry, there. I've heard the cry. I've heard the cry of the lad." And I believe that uh, that when God hears you hungry, He starts to respond. Amen. When God, when God hears that you are hungry, when that you are hungry for His Word and that you are hungry for things of the Spirit, you start to get the attention of God. So uh, we, we want to get back into this tonight and uh, you know we were speaking about uh, hunger for the Holy Spirit and uh, I believe that when we get back to the desire of the Holy Spirit, that that, that is when we're going to start to fulfill our God-given purpose upon the earth. And I know last uh, a couple of weeks ago we shared uh, we shared about Acts chapter one and Acts chapter two and uh, in Joel how God said that in the last days uh, He was going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh and that we are living now in the very last days and uh, I want I want I want I want to take you to uh, to the Holy Spirit tonight and uh, I want to check the origins out a little bit and I want to my my job is to try and develop your hunger to try and and set that hunger on the inside of you tonight and uh, that's that's my intentions and uh, to discover more of the Holy Spirit. And to, to try and read God's word and to see where we can try and start to discover and uh, find out more of what the spirit is all about. Amen. We all know very, very, uh, very well that the, 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 the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity and uh, he is the least desired. He is the least desired yet. He has all that we need to finish our God given purpose upon the earth. Amen. He is the least desired and uh, I know we speak much about God the Father, we speak about the Son, but we hardly speak about the Holy Spirit. Yet he's the third person in the Trinity and uh, he's the least spoken about. But I believe that tonight we're going to start to, to get back to the original patterns of what God wants us to, to start to see in his word. Amen. And uh, you know the Holy Spirit was all, always there in creation. And we're going to go look back and there were some things that I've been studying for a long time now but uh, didn't want to really bring it out but tonight I feel that it's uh, it's relevant to bring out amen and the Bible says this in the book of uh, of Genesis chapter 1 it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth now the earth was formless and empty darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters the Spirit of God hovered over the waters amen and uh, I believe this tonight that uh, that the Father is the author of creation. The Father is the author of creation. Amen. Jesus is the architect 
of creation. And when you start to look at this in the book of Colossians, you'll begin to see that, uh, that, that uh, the Word of God says that Jesus, that, 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 that He holds everything together. He's the architect of creation, that nothing was made through Him. And uh, the Bible even says in John 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and uh, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. He's the architect of creation. I believe that Jesus is this. And uh, when, you go, when, you, when you start to look at the book of Colossians, if you have time, you can go ahead and read it. It's a very short book. And uh, you begin to see the, 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 the things that, that God uh, uh, says in those books through, through, the, through, through Revelation and the prophet uh, and, 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 uh, and Apostle Paul. He says this. He says that, that God felt it uh, in him to place himself. He, he, was, uh, he was happy to place himself in Jesus. So that Jesus could function and operate. And the Bible says this in closing that, that he holds all things together. He is the architect of creation. Amen. And to me, the Holy Spirit tonight is the administrator. He is the administrator of creation. The administrator of creation. And I believe that tonight, even as you would indulge in God's word, that uh, Genesis 1 is just loaded with, uh, with so much of information, especially chapter, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It's, uh, it's got so much of things that, are, that have happened in, this, uh, in these two verses. It would, uh, it would baffle and take us much of time to, to actually go into to details of what this actually is all about. And uh, maybe on another time we would have time and we will begin to read and, and see God's Word amen, in, in a different light. But uh, tonight I want to just focus on the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says this, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the sea, uh, over the waters. Now we must understand this, that this word is, uh, is something that when you, when you speak of some, someone that hovers over something, it's something that you, you circle around, you speak about birds and uh, birds will hover over something. They will hover over their nest and uh, they will begin to, they will begin to, to, to hover over something is, uh, is to be suspended in midday. A bee would do, a same, would, would do the same thing. It would hover over a flower and uh, you'll begin to see that, uh, that to, to do such a thing, it's mostly got to do with birthing when it comes to, 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 a, to a bird. It's got to do with birthing and we'd see an eagle when, when it's about to give birth that they would hover over uh, its, uh, its nest and it would, it would protect that because they know that there is, uh, there, is, uh, there is something that's about to be birthed in that. Amen. So if I could go a bit further now, uh, when, when, uh, when Moses got this revelation, and I believe this in, in my heart. It's not something that, uh, that's written anywhere. I just believe this when I, when I started to study the Word of God. That the water that Moses is speaking about here, it had no life. I believe this in my heart that it had no life because it was just a liquid. It had no life because uh, before creation, God, uh, uh, water could not exist before creation because water holds life. And there was nothing living before God and nothing living before the Almighty God and the, and the Spirit of God. There's nothing living before that. So the Bible says that when he created this, that the, that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. It was, a dead, it was dead waters that he was over And uh, I went into some, uh, some words to try and find out this in the, in the Hebrew and things of that sort. And uh, it says that uh, euphemism is the word that, uh, that you use to describe a certain thing. That's like something. It's called euphemism. And uh, this, 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 this evening, even as I come to you, I know I just learned that word uh, in this week as well. So we're going we're gonna to start to see how Moses, Moses now, you can understand he was indirectly saying water because for the lack of better, of, of better vocabulary at that specific time. And I believe that we can give him a break because he, had, he wrote the Pentateuch. He wrote the book of Genesis, Exodus, and he, and he wrote the first five books of the Bible. And he was having this revelation as to what was, uh, what was going on. So, so he put the word down that the, that the Spirit of God over, over the waters, the Spirit of God. I believe that this water had no life. It had no life. Amen. It was when the Spirit touched the water or this liquid form that it became water. It became life. Because the Spirit gives life. Amen. And when you need help, the first person that you should call tonight is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives life. Now when the Holy Spirit touches something, life comes on the inside of them. The Holy Spirit is a life-giving source. The Holy Spirit is a life-giving source to, to every idea that you have tonight, to every, to every, to every uh, uh, project that you have in your life. The, the Holy Spirit is a life-giving source. The Holy Spirit gives life even to your body. 
So you must understand that to every situation that we are faced with tonight, that no matter what we go through, that the Holy Spirit is our life-giving source. Now we must understand this, that the Holy Spirit wants to be here, wants to be part of our life so that, uh, so that it can be a solution to our problems. It can be a solution to our problems. Now, you must understand this now when I'm speaking to this, when I'm speaking to you, that, uh, that the Holy Spirit now, will be, we, we always go to other people for, for, for advice. We go to, to other to, to people and we go to, to people that let us down and we go to, to other sources and we try to look up in the internet. Uh, when you are put into a certain situation, uh, you try to look up every other resource, uh, but we don't look to the Holy Spirit. Yet the Holy Spirit is free. Yet the Holy Spirit is, uh, it, it has, you, don't, you don't need to have a phone to, to phone the Holy Spirit. You don't need data to get the Holy Spirit. Amen. All you need is a connection with God to receive the Holy Spirit. All you need to is to get down on your knees and say, God, you know what? I, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. And, and the Holy Spirit will direct you to, uh, to, to certain people to, to get advice. And the Holy Spirit will direct you to uh, how to go about resolving your situation tonight. I believe that. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our source. The Holy Spirit uh, is something that uh, we need to be dependent on. We need to be dependent on the Holy Spirit because the Bible says this, that the, the Holy Spirit was on this liquid. And, uh, and the Bible says that uh, while it hovered over this, I believe this, that uh, it was the Spirit that gave it life. The Spirit gave that liquid life to become water. Because the Spirit is life-giving. Amen. The Spirit is a life-giving source tonight. And we don't need to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to exhaust every other resource, but just go down on your knees and, and, and confront the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will begin to give you direction. The Holy Spirit will be your constant guide. The Holy Spirit will be your fellowship. The Holy Spirit will keep your mind at perfect peace tonight. Amen. And you must understand that God is the master over all formless situations. Now the Bible says this in Genesis 1. That the world, that the, that the, that uh, that God created the heavens and the earth, and uh, now the earth was formless and empty, formless and empty. Now God, God, He is the, He is the master over formless situations. He is the master over a situation whereby uh, you you feel that there's no hope. He is the master over a situation whereby you will feel that you know what, uh, this situation here is beyond anything and uh, I'm never ever going to get out of it. God has that ability to come and say, you know what, I'm the master over that situation. God created the problem to demonstrate the power or the ability he has to make a dead situation come to life. Dead liquid. Can, 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 you, can, can you speak to this with me? He created that problem. He created this and he spoke this into existence and he created this. So he created the problem and he says, you know what? The only way you can resolve this problem is if the Holy Spirit comes on the inside. So, so he created the problem and he also was a solution to the problem. So God creates a problem to demonstrate the power or his ability so that he can make a dead situation come to life. It was, it was a dead place. It was formless. It had no life in it. But the Bible says this, that, uh, that when, the, when, the, when the Holy Spirit was this, it just hovered over the water. There was life that was about to come. Amen. I believe that there was life that was about to come. Now, when something hovers over something, I want you to just get this picture very quickly. When you, when you, when you do this thing, now God in His omnipresent power, the Holy Spirit uh, in, in His power, in His, in His omnipresent, and you must understand this, when you hover over something that uh, this liquid may have been, uh, it may have been vast. Because God just created the heavens and the earth, and it may have been a large space whereby we couldn't even fathom with our own uh, with our own eyes or even look to the end. But because God is omnipresent and the Holy Spirit, uh, the Spirit of God is omnipresent, the Bible says that it hovered over it. The entire set of whatever it was, I believe that the Spirit was not just in one place. That the Spirit stretched itself out because He is omnipresent. He is omnipresent and uh, you, must, you must realize this tonight church that uh, when the Bible says this that the spirit hovered over the water it was not speaking of one specific and I don't know whether you looked at the ocean the Holy Spirit could not have been just in one spot and left the balance of it open no from what I understand God is omnipresent He's omniscient and he's omnipresent and uh, he's an almighty God. So if he's omnipresent, he could have been around, he could have been flat on the water, he could have covered the whole vast uh, span of the water, he could have covered all that just because he is omnipresent. He's God, he can do that. 
And I believe that tonight that when, he, when, the, when the Bible says that, he, that, that the Spirit hovered over the water, it was not just one specific spot, that he took, he took charge of the entire thing. He was over the entire thing because he is omnipresent. Now God creates this problem to demonstrate that, you know what, we as human beings need him in our lives. So it creates a situation whereby, you know what, this has no form, it's formless. It's formless. It's a, it's a dead situation. Everything is dead about it. If you look at the situation, it's a dead situation. But God said, you know what? I'm going to, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit is going to touch it and it's going to come to life. So whatever challenge that you are faced with, God wants to, to be the solution tonight. God wants you to allow him, you know what, to come and just sit on your situation. God wants you to allow him to come and just hover over your situation because uh, he is the one that can bring your dead situation back to life. He is the one that can bring your situation uh, that seems hopeless and seems uh, like there is no, uh, that there's, there's no restoration. He is the one that can bring it back to life tonight. Amen. Do you believe me? I want to share something with you and I want to use a very simple illustration. I have two kids, uh, Danielle and Deandra, many of you know, know them and uh, uh, they are, uh, they're four and they, they, are, they are five and seven, sorry, and they are, my, my wife and I would do anything to make their life easy. We would do anything for them and uh, they come to us for the situation, we would, uh, we would, we would, uh, we would attend to it. And, and, and no matter what it is, we would, we would try our best to, to try and make the life as comfortable as possible. And uh, there is nothing that, uh, that they lack and uh, we want to keep it that way, man, because we are the parents. We are, I'm, I'm the father of these children. So, 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 so I want to I just, just show you something a little bit. Uh, you see, when, uh, when these girls play around, I create a problem for them sometimes. I sometimes create a challenge. I sometimes create a situation whereby when they are playing, that they would come to me for the answer. So that I would look good. I would look good. I would ask them if they want to build something and uh, if they want to build a, a, a tent and uh, I would give them the things to do it but I would leave them for a while and then they would come back to me and say, Dad, you know what? I want, I want you to build it because I know I can do a better job so I would, I would attend to it and, uh, and I would make it better for them. So I, I create a situation for them. In the same sense, God creates a situation for us so that when we are walking into a formless situation, when we are walking into a dead situation, that we would, we would come to him to, to attend to our situation. Amen. We would come to him so that he would be our, our source, that he would be our answer tonight, that he would be, uh, he, he would send the Holy Spirit that if we come to him with this thing. So he creates certain problems. And, and most of the time we, we are always blaming the enemy and uh, we are always blaming the devil. You know what? How come, uh, how come you say God, the, the, the enemy is against me? But no, sometimes God creates the situation so that he can, so that you can get closer to him. So you can realize that, you know what, I don't have to depend on, 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 on human resources, but I have to depend on the Holy Spirit. I have to depend on the Holy Spirit, amen? God wants you to know that, that no matter what the situation may be, that He is the answer for you tonight, that He is the answer. Amen. So in the previous weeks tonight, I want to uh, draw your attention very quickly that I've been teaching that uh, we spoke about the breath of God and we learned about how it came out into them in the book of Acts and there was a wind and uh, we spoke about how in Job that the Bible says this, that, uh, that the Spirit of God has made him and the breath of the Almighty gives him life. And uh, we said that this is Ruach. It's a breath. That's the Hebrew word for spirit, amen? Ruach, the breath of God. Now, I want to, I want to just uh, draw your attention very quickly back to uh, verse number one when the, when the word says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was not formed. So, uh, so, so the water, so God created this and, uh, and the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of God will hover over the waters. Now, God created out of the breath of his mouth. He spoke things into existence, Amen. He spoke things into existing. Now, we can see that when God speaks, that when, I don't know about you, but when you speak your breath, you, you, you use oxygen, you use the wind from within you. Now, when God spoke these things into existence, it was the breath that came out of him. It was the Ruach breath. It was the creative breath. It was the Holy Spirit. That's why I said that uh, that God was the archi the God was the the author. The whole Jesus was the was the architect, and the Holy Spirit was the administrator. So that when the, when the word was spoken, it was spoken, and it was the it was the Holy Spirit that did the work, because it was the breath of God that left him. Eh? The breath. It was the breath of God. So so the Holy Spirit was already in 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 creation. 
We must understand the Bible says this in Psalms 33 verse 6. It says, By the word of the, of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. By the breath of his mouth. Can you understand this tonight, church? That the, that the, that the breath of God is already, is already releasing the Holy Spirit. The breath of him is already giving us the water. That we must understand that he is the author, and the Holy Spirit is the administrator, and Jesus was initially the architect of this entire design. The breath of God. That's why he was there from the very beginning. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to represent God. Or will we be, or there will be no dominion power in our representation. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to represent, represent God accurately. And we will not have dominion power in our, in, in our representation upon the earth. Now we are representative, representative of Christ, amen, upon the earth of God, upon the earth. Now, the Bible says this in, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, and I want to take you through this. If you would just give me some time. It says this in 127, it says, God created. Uh, in in, in, uh, in uh, 127, it says, and God said, let, the, let us make man in his image. So he created Adam and Eve. He created them and he said, you know what? I want you to be fruitful and multiply. Subdue the earth. Be fruitful. And that word fruitful, we can understand that it can mean many things for us tonight. Amen. It can mean many things for us. Multiply and uh, to increase and uh, take over, take over to ground and territory and uh, start to start to dominate the earth. Amen. Do things and be fruitful, increase. He goes on in, 20, in 28, he charges them and he, he tell, tells them to, he gives them this charge. Become dominant, rule the earth. Dominate everything. Amen. He says dominate it. But in chapter 2 verse 7. If I want to just read this very quickly for you. It says this. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils. He breathed into his nostrils. Amen. I believe this tonight. That, that uh, God allowed them. He created Adam and Eve in the beginning in 127. And, they were, and he instructed them. He gave them the instructions on what to do. But uh, there was something more that he needed for them to do. There was something more. He said, you know what? You're not complete like how you are. Just with your flesh. And what you're living. And that uh, I need to put my spirit on the inside of you. I need to put my spirit on the inside of you. That is why the Bible says this. He says in verse number 2, verse number 7, it says that, and he breathed into their nostrils. Now, uh, excuse me for just thinking, uh, thinking a bit further in this whole thing, but uh, you know, in Acts, when they received the Holy Spirit, the Bible says it came like a wind, and, uh, and now you must understand they are having their own Pentecostal experience in the garden. They're having their own Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit experience in the garden, whereby, whereby the Spirit, the Bible says, that, that, the, that the, the breath of God is the Spirit of God. The breath of God is the Spirit of God. That's how we learn. It says, Rohak, the breath of God is the Spirit that God breathed into them. They were fully functional. They were fully functional. They had the Spirit of God on the inside of them. So this tells me tonight, church, that, when, that, that salvation was just not enough. Salvation for us was just not enough. And uh, salvation was something that was in God's plan so that we could come and have eternal life. But that was just not enough. Uh, that something was still void. Now. Like, that's why the Bible says this. Uh, he says that when Adam and Eve sinned, he put them out. The glory of God was off them. There was no spirit on the inside of them anymore. But they still loved under their own dictatorship. They never lived under the rule of God. They lived under their own way. And the Bible says this, that, uh, that the Spirit of God left them. The Bible says that uh, the Spirit of God could not contend with man anymore. So it left them. So the ultimate thing, the promise for the entire scenario that we are, we are faced with tonight, church, uh, is to get back the Holy Spirit. Jesus came, yes, for sin and he came for salvation, but we need to get back the Holy Spirit. We lost the Holy Spirit. We lost the Holy Spirit tonight. And the Holy Spirit is, uh, is something that we need to get back and desire again. Desire the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says in, the, in Genesis chapter 8, you know this, uh, when, when, the, when there was a flood and Noah, uh, Noah was in the ark for, for some time. And the Bible says this, that, uh, that he sent out a, a, a raven, he never come back, uh, so he sent out a dove. The dove came back. After seven days, he sent the dove out again. Now we know that the dove is a, is, is, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. 
It's used and it's, uh, it's, in, the, it's in the Bible and it's a, it's a simple thing to understand that the, the dove is, the, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It's gentle. It's sensitive. The dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. When the dove came back, it came back with an with a olive leaf. It speaks about newness of life. It speaks about the newness of life. It's in the Holy Spirit that you would experience newness of life tonight. Amen. And I know I'm not shouting and screaming like I usually do, but I want to get this into your spirit tonight uh, because we must understand that the Holy Spirit, when He comes uh, on the inside of you, things will begin to change. Things will begin to change uh, as much as you may receive Christ uh, as your Savior, but the Holy Spirit uh, is something that will begin to change your whole perspective uh, on how you're supposed to operate uh, in the earth. And I promise you that when the Holy Spirit comes uh, upon you, that He begins to change and He begins to move uh, and the Holy Spirit will begin to, to take you into your God-given purpose uh, and into your destiny. He completes us. That is why in the book of Genesis, the uh, Adam and Eve were not complete until 2 verses 7. Until chapter 2, verse 7, when God said, you know what, come on, breathe my Ruach breath on the inside of you so that you may receive spirit to function and to dominate the earth, that you may have power. Like how we say to disciples, you'll have power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you tonight. Amen. You'll have power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you tonight. The dove comes up again in the book of Genesis, chapter Chapter 15, it comes up again as a symbol when, when God is cutting covenant with Abraham. In the book of uh, uh, Genesis chapter 15, it says that, 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 that God told him, you know, bring, bring all the, uh, the various types of animals. And it was also a dove that was there specifically. And God cut covenant with him. Amen. There was also a, a time, you know, in the Bible that, uh, that uh, when, when, when Jesus was baptized, when he had his inauguration, that the Holy Spirit was there and the Father was there and the Son was there. There was like a reunion type of a thing. Amen. The Spirit brings newness on the inside of you. The Spirit brings newness on the inside of you tonight, church. And I don't know about you tonight, but it is the hunger for the Holy Spirit. It is the search for him. That's going to begin to complete you tonight. You know that thing that's void in our life. The thing that's void in our life tonight. The thing that you, that you feel. You know what? I've got everything. But there's still something that's missing. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. And I believe that we can search. We have to search Him. Because of we, you know what? We, we hunger for everything else. And, uh, and we, when it comes to our physical bodies. We start to, to, start to go on diets. And we start to eat correctly. And we start to go uh, and gym. But uh, when it comes to the things of the Spirit. Uh, we neglect. We neglect the Holy Spirit. And I believe tonight, church, that this is the time that is relevant for us tonight, church, that we should come. Come to the waters. Come to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in, in John chapter 6, verse 35, and I want to read the scripture for you. It says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, will never go hungry and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. He made that declaration tonight. And if there's something that's void in our life, it's the Holy Spirit. We can lose everything else, sir, but if we lose the Holy Spirit, we're in big supper church. And I believe in the latter days that the end time is at our doorstep. The end time is at our doorstep and uh, if we haven't, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, I promise you, we're gonna, we're gonna lose out with God. If you don't have the hunger for the Holy Spirit, we're gonna lose out with God. With God. And you know, there's so much of things that are happening around us. There's, a, there's viruses that are coming, and there's, a, there's different variants of this virus. And the Bible says uh, that in the last days, uh, that there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Uh, and the Bible says that in the last days, there'll be plagues and there'll be sicknesses and disease, and uh, many will grow cold, uh, and the very elect will fall. And we see it happening that there'll be a one world order that, uh, that this, world, uh, this world has nothing to offer us. But we have to trust in the Holy Spirit tonight. We have to trust in the Holy Spirit. That was a gift from God. That is why in the book of John chapter 4, he says this in the book of John chapter 4, when God, when Jesus went and he met this woman at the well in Samaria, I believe this, and the Bible says that if you drink from me, if you drink from me, you'll never thirst again. 
And she said, you know what, give me some of this water that you drink. I'm just paraphrasing that. She said, give me some of this water so that I don't have to come to this well anymore. And tonight, I promise you, church, it's a, if you drink of the Holy Spirit, if you're inviting me to your life, you will not have to go to the well of deceit anymore. You won't have to go to the well of alcohol anymore. You won't have to go to the well uh, of adultery anymore. You don't have to go to the well of, of drug addiction anymore. If you're gone, if you were dead, the Bible says that she said, you know what, give me some of this water. I don't have to come back to this well. And tonight, even as I challenge you tonight, I don't know about you tonight, church, but wherever you are, the Holy Spirit has to become a priority. You have to go to bed knowing that the Holy Spirit is with you. You have to wake up greeting the Holy Spirit. You have, to, you have to acknowledge Him in the days and even when, you, when you're going throughout the day, you have to acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is, without you, is with you because without the Holy Spirit, we are lost. And even as I pray tonight, I want you to, to receive this prayer. And I know that God has touched you in the short exhortation. And I believe that this prayer will begin to touch you and I begin to, to challenge you even as you are getting to, to deeper things in the weeks to come that, uh, that, that you'll begin to be challenged with the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you and I give you praise tonight. And I thank you, Father Lord, that we could have this opportunity, O oh Lord, that we can come and, and call upon your name, Father Lord, because there is no other name by which man can be saved. I thank you that the Holy Spirit convicts us and brings us into all truth. That the Holy Spirit, Father God, comes on the inside of us so we can become witnesses. Father, we can touch the earth, Father Lord Jesus God, knowing, O oh Lord, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I pray right now, Father Lord, that wherever we are in our lives, oh God, that we would long for the Holy Spirit. We would desire for the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would come on the inside of us, oh God, that we would, Father Lord Jesus, in the last days, oh God, that we would pursue you, oh God. Oh Father, we will begin to pursue the Holy Spirit, oh God. There will be a hunger, there will be a thirst oh, from within us, oh God, that we will begin to desire, desire the Holy Spirit, oh God, on a different level, oh God, that we will begin to, oh Father Lord, search, oh God, and find you. We thank you tonight, Father Lord, and I pray, Father Lord, that, uh, Father, for your people, oh God, who are in need tonight, Father Lord, who, for whatever they are looking for, Father Lord, in prayer, oh God, uh, oh Father, in sickness, oh Father Lord, in, in whatever, Father, looking for jobs, oh God, that they will search the Holy Spirit, oh God, uh, oh Father, that they can come and heal them, oh Lord, uh, and restore them, oh God, to where they require to be. And I thank you for this right now, Father Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 When we come again next time, and uh, when I'm sharing again, I want, I want to show you the offspring of the Holy Spirit and how you can assess yourself and see whether you are in alignment according to the book of Galatians chapter 5 22. There are nine fruits of the Spirit. It's a, the Bible says fruit of the Spirit is an offspring of it. And whether we are really operating or whether we are really living according to God's plan and purpose. Amen. And uh, I want to encourage you to stay tuned to our various... Uh, uh, social media platforms and I believe that you'll get uh, all your announcements there you'll, you'll see on Sunday morning we'll be having our morning intercession at the church uh, and online as well if you stay, stay tuned and you'll get your link and at 9 o'clock we have our celebration service and that afternoon we have our, our kids zone so uh, there is things that are happening online amen you'll not be together physically but things are still happening online and I want to encourage you to share the link let God uh, let God be God every man a liar amen and we know that God is going to do great things in this coming days. Amen. God bless you.